Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's talk. I hope you can hear me, and I hope you can see me, and I hope you also can see the presentation I'm presenting. The agenda for today will be a quick intro from myself to, to let you know who's talking to you. Uh, then I'll talk about the theory, so how, how MQTT works and how it can be used for device control. And then I'll jump after that into the uh, into the practical workshop and I'll show how it, it, it it's implemented from scratch on ST, uh, on ST you know, development board. So yeah, the agenda here says RP2040, but that's not true. So I'll, I'm going to use STM32. So uh, said that, let me jump straight away to the, um, uh, to the next one, which is which is introduction. So who am I? Uh, my name is Sergey, and uh, I am a firmware engineer. I think pretty much like the rest of you, uh, rest of you guys. So I'm an author of Bare Metal Guide, uh, published on GitHub. I think it's the most popular Bare Metal Guide on GitHub. Has more than two thousand stars. Also, I am an author of Embedded Networking Guide, also published on on, on uh, GitHub. And I am an engineering director at Sesanta. So uh, this is a company behind an open source uh, networking library called Mongoose. So, uh, and the website is here, mongoose.ws. So, uh, and I'm going to use uh, Mongoose later on in my talk. So uh, I'm also a frequent speaker on various conferences like Embedded World and, and other conferences, by the way, I'm speaking this year, so I have a talk about developing embedded uh, web UI interfaces, and I'm also conducting a three hours workshop on embedded world jointly with ARM. So uh, uh, our company and ARM together putting that workshop uh, and we'll, we'll basically have a live session, three hours uh, long live session on 10th of April. So if you're embedded world, please uh, uh, talk to me, I would be happy to, to meet. So uh, that's about me. And now let's start and go straight away into the meat of the presentation. So the next topic would be uh, talk about um, MQTT. So why it is, why it exists and why it is popular um, for fleet management, for like remote device management. So, um, Let's see, what's the easiest way to um, control a device to have uh, some sort of remote control? The easiest way, I think, it's it's the, the web UI. So putting a web UI on the uh, on embedded device, and this way you can control it by human or by automatically. So uh, an automated tools can call UI uh, endpoints, or you can have a nice dashboard. Uh, for the human, and you can control device directly. But in this thing, uh, in, in this situation, a device should be directly visible to you. So uh, it should be uh, either inside your LAN, so uh, in the same, you should be in the same local network together with the device, or a device should be somewhere outside on the internet having a public IP address, so publicly visible. And if we have your device is outside the, uh, uh, so if you are an outside the local network and your device has a web UI of some sort, then you cannot directly access that device because the firewall would not let you in. So, uh, and like the way to overcome this is to uh, open a hole in the firewall. So have some, some firewall configuration to let the inbound connections, but that is a bad idea in general because in this way you'll expose your device, which is uh, usually a low resource device uh, on on the wild internet. So anybody can access it, any anybody can DDoS it, and so on. So it's like a, a pretty big security threat. So. Uh, What's the solution for that? So uh, the solution for that is to uh, have some external, externally visible server and that all the 
parties that want to communicate with each other. For example, you as an operator, which is depicted as a laptop here on this picture, and device, you all connect to that external server. And then this external server, it dispatches messages, it routes messages from uh, you know, one client to another client. So this is the general idea. And you can build your own proprietary protocol to implement this idea. You can build that protocol on top of existing protocols, for example, on top of, of a WebSocket or, a, or HTTP. You can do that. But there is a standard protocol called MQTT um, that, that allows that. So basically, the idea is that we have an intermediary server that uh, that is used as the um, as a, as a router as a dispatcher of messages. So in this case, everything works fine because all the all the clients are behind the firewall and they make outbound connections and outbound connections are allowed. So this is good. Uh, and another good point is that all the clients they they are not their clients. You know they are. Uh, uh, TCP clients, not servers. Uh, and this is also good from the security point of view. So if a device does not run any any service, it's way harder to take it down, right? So if it, if it makes only outbound connection, that's good. So uh, and yeah, so this is this is the general general idea behind this. So how to allow uh, multiple devices that are in premises somewhere to be accessible uh, like from from the wild internet. So this is this is the way all devices connect to some intermediary server uh, server. And uh, <clears throat> in terms of how MQTT works, so MQTT protocol itself, it, it implements a publish subscribe semantics. So for say in this picture we have three clients and every client when it connects to the MQTT server, it it subscribes to the uh, uh to certain topics so there are two like uh, two abstractions in mqtt world the uh, uh the topic name and the message so uh the topic is basically an arbitrary string the topic name is a string right and a message is also a string so a client uh can either subscribe to a topic or to a list of topics or it can also publish to a topic, to a specific topic. So a publish message, it contains topic name and the message. And subscribe uh, subscribe command just contains a list of, um, of topics to subscribe to. And the topic name could be also a wildcard. So in MQTT, there are two wildcards, a star, which means, which grabs everything between the slashes and hash, which grabs everything. So, uh, and so this way, uh, it works like this. So uh, you can, like there are multiple clients, any client can connect to the MQTT server and any client can subscribe to a certain topic. And when a client subscribes, MQTT server uh, adds that subscription record into an internal list of sub subscriptions, right? So it makes a record for for him for itself here, uh, uh, saying that okay, client one subscribed to the uh, to the topic a slash foo and b star bar, and client two subscribed to the b slash hash, right? So b slash hash means like all the topics that starts with b slash, and with anything after that. Uh, would be would match that 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 subscription, uh, and a slash foo it's an exact match, and b star bar means b slash then anything but slash and then bar. So um, and in this example we have like these two clients, client one and client two subscribing to topics, and client three does not subscribe to any topic. It just sends messages. So let's see if client three sends three messages. One message it sends to a topic a slash foo, right? So in this case, who receives that message? Uh, in this case, only client one receives that message because only client one has a, a 
respective subscription. The second message, b slash one slash bar uh, and hello to will be will be caught by client one and client two because b slash one slash bar matches this uh, uh, b slash star subscription, uh, b slash star slash bar. And also it matches b slash hash subscription because hash is a universal wild card. So the second message will be received by both client one and client two. And subscribe uh, and the message number three, b slash two slash baz, will be received only by, by client two because b slash two slash baz does not match b slash star slash bar. All right, so I think this is understood. It's pretty, pretty simple, right? So basically we have a way to like any clients that can subscribe to any number of topics and any client can also send messages to any topics. So this is the basic MQTT abstractions. Uh, and based on top of that, we can build a pretty sophisticated communication mechanisms. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other things that I need to mention for you. So uh, that publish subscribe mechanism is pretty good for data report. For example, if you have a client that reports some sensor data, it's perfect. You know, like you just report your sensor values to the, you know, to the MQTT server and hope that some other client catches, subscribes to, to your messages, catches them and, and saves them into some sort of database. Right, but for the device control, the usual um, the usual semantic is request response, because you would like to know uh, if you, if you want to send a command to the device, for example, update your configuration or switch on the LED, switch on the motor, uh, then you would you would need to know what was the result of this command, <clears throat> right? So in this case, you need publish subscribe, and this publish subscribe semantics could be easily implemented using two MQT topics, right? So uh, in this diagram, client one, it subscribes to a topic, uh, uh, to one topic, and it sends responses to another topic. So usually, uh, at least in our, you know, like at least our team uh, always uses uh, uh, topic suffixes Right, so a suffix rs, rx means like receive. It's kind of like a serial, serial line analogy. So receive, uh, rx means receive. So this is an input topic. So uh, uh, and tx is transmit. Right. So this is an output topic. Uh, so and the idea is that if you want to send a command to a device. You uh, uh, a device should listen should should subscribe to the Rx topic, so a prefix should be the some unique device ID, uh, and then you can send request to this unique device ID slash Rx, send the command, and the response a device should respond to the uh, uh, to a different topic, uh, some some unique ID slash tx. So. There could be other ways, but this is a pretty simple way to implement re request response semantics, right? So, um, uh, and there is another thing, uh, uh, the last one that you need to understand in order to build a pretty functional device management systems based on MQTT. So uh, there is a, 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 a functionality called a last will message. So when a client connects to the MQTT server, it can say, hey, MQTT server, when I get disconnected, please send this message to this topic. And it's called a last will. The reason for that is that the device itself cannot predict when it will be disconnected. The disconnection can, can happen due to various reasons. For example, like some fiber cable can get cut uh, and uh, and so, but MQTT server can always detect those disconnections. And when a client disconnects and if it registered the last will, it will send this uh, specific message to the topic the client specified. And in this way, it's possible to detect, you know, all client disconnections. Uh, 
And, uh, and another thing is retain messages. So a client can mark a specific message as retained. And that means that uh, when any other client subscribes to that topic, uh, that it, it immediately gets that message. So uh, uh, a, a client does not even need to, to publish that message, right? It, it, it will be automatically delivered to the new connected client. So uh, and this functionality allows to uh, implement device presence notifications, right? So be, for example, if you have a fleet of devices, then you don't need to keep an external database that lists all of them and so on. So uh, all you all you need to do is just to uh, let every device to send a, a retained message, and uh, when uh, you know when you connect to that specific topic, that you'll get a retained messages from all devices that were you know that that published that message before. So you can get a list of devices that are present in your fleet. All right. So this is pretty much it. That's the end of the theory, I think. Uh, and using the uh, using these using you know that information, uh, you should be able to like build functional implementation. So uh, and uh, let me let me do that. Uh, so uh, right now I will switch to the second mode of my presentation, which will be a live workshop. So the theory is over. Now the practice starts. And what I want to do, I want to. I'll uh, stop, uh, stop publishing my presentation and start publishing my whole desktop. So you'll see everything I'm doing. Um, all right, so let me stop this. And start the, uh, the entire desktop. All right, so now I should be, um, I should I should show my whole desktop and if if you don't see my desktop please let me know. All right, so what is on my desktop? On my desktop there is my presentation. One thing, another thing is like some notes, a cheat sheet that I prepared for this webinar. Uh, another thing is terminal. I am going to use this terminal for um observing serial logs from my device. And another thing is this nuclear board that uh, I have connected to my device. So it's connected to my workstation through this USB cable, and also it's connected to the Ethernet network. So this is a uh, nuclear uh, F7, I think it's F756 um, uh, uh, board. So it's a uh, Cortex M7. Um, but pretty much everything I'll, I'll be talking about here will 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 be applicable to uh, any uh, ST device with a built-in Ethernet interface. So only few details will 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 vary. So uh, this is it, and uh, what I'll be doing right now, I will try to build uh, and to like create a device management system from scratch, from absolutely zero, from ground up. Right, and for that I'm going to use Cube. Okay, so I'll use Cube IDE. So, uh, and first of all, what I'll do, I'll create um, a simple base skeleton firmware. So the firmware which does nothing, just uh, 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 initializes a, a bunch of pins and will just print some log messages to the console. So that's it. The uh, and and then on top of this that firmware, I will add the uh, required functionality, uh, required MQT functionality, and I will explain every step as I go. So uh, this is an empty cube, right? So uh, and let me start. So I'll create a new STM32 project. So cube now should throw at me a part selector, and here I type. F756ZG, because this is the board I have. So, and as you can see, I'm using a part number. I'm not using a development board. So the steps I'm showing will work for custom boards. Like, and uh, so it's basically a, a, an absolute from scratch presentation. So the uh, project name, let's call it F756. 
finish. So now a cube uh, makes, uh, creates a project scaffolding for me. And what I'll do next, I will set the, um, uh, the clock, the CPU clock to the maximum. And then I will enable all the pins that I need to enable. So I will enable uh, UART pins because I will, uh, I I want to see the uh, serial debug output. I will in a, I will configure LED pins and I will configure Ethernet pins. So these three categories of pins that I will uh, uh, configure and nothing else. And I also will use no other uh, middleware, no RTOS, no nothing, just pretty simple bare metal firmware. Uh, but by the way, everything that I will be showing will also work in RTOS environment. I just want to use it just to save time and 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 keep the uh, keep everything simple. So clock configuration is the first. So I'm I switch here. The default is 16 megahertz, right? And the maximum here, the cube tells me it's 216. So I type 216, press enter, and press OK to let cube to <clears throat> select the select all the dividers automatically and to run my board at 216 mags. All right, done. Now uh, now my board is configured to run at 216 mags. I switch back to pinout configuration. Here, uh, I think in system core, what I want to do, I want to configure LED pins. There are three LED pins on this board, on B0, B7, and B14. Right, so I want to configure them all. And let me do that. So first one is B7, it's here. I select, I click on B7 and select GPAO output. Then I want to do the same for G, G for B14. I don't know where it is. I think it's somewhere here. Uh, yeah, BB14 is here. Select GPIO output. And I know that B0 is at the bottom. So PB0 is here. So I click on PB0, select GPIO output, and we are done. So now we have three pins, uh, GPIO pins configured as GPIO output. Good. So next thing is I want to configure uh, USART 3. So I click on connectivity and I choose USART 3. So why USART 3? USART 3 is because uh, this board has a built-in debug interface. So here it is. It's a built-in um, uh, ST-Link, right? And that ST-Link is connected to the main uh, main chip through the SWD pins for debug, and also it connects um, UART pins from USART 3, right? So USART 3 pins from this chip uh, connected to the ST-Link here, and I can read those through my USB connection. So that's why I need to configure USART 3 to be able to read a debug output, right? So I click on USART 3, uh, choose asynchronous, and by default, cube selects um, two pins, PB10 and PB11, which are also wrong. <laughs> I need to change them to PD9. I, I click on PD9 and choose USART3RX, and also PD8. Click on PD8 and choose USART3TX. All right, good. So now I have USART a, a serial connect, uh, configured. Okay, and, and the next thing I need to do is to configure Ethernet. So I click on Ethernet and I want to configure Ethernet pins as well. So this chip uh, has a, uh, a built-in Mac controller, Ethernet Mac controller, uh, but it doesn't have Ethernet Phi controller. And I think Ethernet Phi controller is not sure is it like this chip or this big one. So, uh, but it's it, it's an external. I think it, it it's this one. It's an external chip uh, from microchip LAN eighty seven twenty. I think so, and it's connected. So these two guys are connected using 
uh, uh, RMII pins, right? So, and they need to be configured to uh, the alternative mode to the uh, RMII mode. So I click on Ethernet, I click on mode RMII, and here uh, I know that almost all pins are correct, but two of them are not. So PB12 and PB13 are wrong, so they need to be changed to PG11. So uh, PG11, uh, so I click on PG11, choose Ethernet TX enable and PG13. So I click on PG13 and choose, uh, where is it? Ethernet TX D0. All right, so here we go. I think we are done. And I click on save to save all this thing and let cube to uh, create generate the code. So uh, now cube generates the code to initialize all those pins, to initialize uh, uh, USART and to initialize uh, Ethernet pins. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, when uh, when I when I initialize Ethernet pins, I never enabled uh, uh, Ethernet interrupt. So that means I never enabled the cube HAL driver. So we just initialize the pins, nothing else. So we don't use Ethernet driver that comes with cube. We don't use any middleware. We don't use WIP. We don't use FreeRTOS. We, we do not. So now uh, let me switch back to the um, to this main.c. And what I want to do, I want to go to main.c and uh, add the simple login code. Let's take a look what. I have written here in my cheat sheet. All right, so in the main function, we have everything initialized now. So I go to the while loop and I, I add these three simple functions. So how use our transmit. So I'm printing message hi to the UART uh, and then I'm toggling GPIO pin. Uh, so uh, B7, I'm toggling B7 and then I'm waiting for half a second. So every half a second, I should be printing a message and blinking an LED. All right, so let me flash this firmware. So I click on flash this firmware. And now click OK. OK. Let's see how it works. All right, so here we see that it's blinking. I hope like you can see that. So blue LED, which is B7 is blinking now. And let me uh, get to my terminal and uh, start the uh, serial monitor program. So I'll use CU, I'm on Mac, so I can use CU. So people on Mac and Linux Systems can use CU, that's a built-in command. On Windows, you can use PuTTY or some other like Terra term, whatever you whatever you want. So CU minus line dev CU um, USB modem minus speed 115 200. So here we go. Look, we we see those messages printed. Uh, so everything works. So now what we have, we have a really basic a uh, simple firmware that does nothing, just prints a log message uh, to the serial and blinks an LED. That's it. So now uh, what I want to do, the next step, uh, the next step, I want to initialize the TCP IP stack on this device. So, and the way I'll do that, I will use Mongoose library. Mongoose library is a, a, uh, is a software library that, a, our company creates. So that's our uh, product. And it's the best way to develop a embedded networking functionality. And I'll show you why. So uh, I, I, what I need to do is to, uh, to in, in order to create a functional networking stack on this board, all I need to do is just to copy two files to my source code. So I go to the GitHub, Cezanta Mongoose, and two files I need to copy is mongoose.h and mongoose.c. So that's the that's the whole integration, right? So let me click on mongoose.h 
and I click here on raw, so to see the raw file, and I just copy paste it. So like there could be more elegant ways to do that, but I'll just copy paste from GitHub. So I click on ink, includes new file, mongoose.h, and paste the content, save, done. Okay, so, uh, and then the same for mongoose.c, right? So mongoose.c, I, oh, again, selecting everything, copy into clipboard, click on source, click on new file, mongoose.c, and paste the content, save. Okay, two files are copied. Another thing I need to do, I need to uh, create a configuration file. So file, it's called mongoose underscore custom dot page. And in that configuration file, let us let me just copy that from my cheat sheet, a couple of lines of code that configure mongoose library. So what, what we say here, we are saying that the build architecture for this is the uh, new lib, new lib, is the C library that is used by Cube, right? So Newlib is a, uh, so Cube uses ARM GCC compiler and ARM GCC compiler comes bundled with the C library called Newlib uh, created by Red Hat. So this is a C library for small systems. And uh, by saying Arch Newlib, we basically, uh, are adding and activating all include files that are specific to the new lib. The next line says, enable TCP IP one. We are saying, hey, don't use any third party TCP IP stack, like from, don't use TCP IP stack from Zephyr, from Lwip, from Azure, use our own. Okay, so, and so this enables our built-in TCP IP stack. Next line, it says that uh, uh, we should create a, a special function called mg underscore millis to let Mongoose library know the exact time. And the next uh, line, it, it enables the uh, built-in driver for STM32F lines because we are using F7. So we're just enabling this driver. Okay, so this is all configuration we need. And now uh, let me go to main.c. What I need to do is to add this include mongoose.h and let me try to rebuild this firmware so i'm rebuilding this firmware and it builds okay builds with no er errors so and this is basically it i already um uh, what i did i integrated mongoose library into my existing code and as you understand that could be any code like any like it could be your firmware your existing firmware it can use our toss, whatever our, our toss it, it could be <clears throat> with existing functionality, but this is the way you integrate like pretty easy. So a uh, next thing, what I want to do, I want to initialize this library and have a running TCP IP stack. And it's pretty easy to do as well. So uh, what I need to do is to have two functions defined. So before main, we define two functions here. So uh, one function is mg millis. As I said, this function is required to let Mongoose know the current number of milliseconds since uh, since boot for like for keeping timers. And the second function is uh, is basically a helper function that prints debug logs. Okay. So uh, and this is the code. So let me copy the code. So uh, I'm go, I go to uh, my snippet before while, and I paste it here. And inside the while loop, what I'll do, I'll basically add just one function called mgmgr pull. And I will comment out my existing code, right? So basically, you, as you can see, there are just a couple of lines of code. What we are saying here, uh, we are declaring uh, Mongoose event manager. We are initializing that manager. A manager is a simple structure that keeps active connections. That's what manager is. So we are initializing it. Uh, by initializing, we are basically saying just, you know, um, initialize the linked list of connections to empty connections and uh, 
uh, create default uh, addresses for DNS resolver and so on. So we are setting debug level to debug, and we are saying, please use this put my put char debug function, which like this one. So we basically uh, will log to the UART. So all logs from Mongoose library will be logged using UART. And then we enable uh, interrupt, Ethernet interrupt. Uh, and by this, we will make our built-in driver work because in our Mongoose custom, we enabled that built-in driver, which has interrupt handler. And uh, and that's basically it. And here is we, here we have an infinite event loop that just goes and uh, pulls for the network network events. That's pretty much it. So let me build this firmware now and flash it. So I'm flashing this firmware. So my blinking should stop, and I think it did. And let me see. So, and I see in my debug log, uh, yeah, we don't have blinking functionality anymore, but we have TCP IP stack running and we see logs from Mongoose library and the logs tell us that, okay, so we have, uh, since we did not define, we did not configure static IP configuration, we using DHCP and DHCP server on my local network it gave an IP address to our device. So it's a 192.168.0.60. Okay, so if I copy that address and if I start another terminal and I ping it, I see responses. So that means that we have a running TCP IP stack. So that that's what it takes to, to have a running TCP IP stack. Uh, again, uh, I want you to know that we did not use any, absolutely any third party software. Uh, we don't need an RTOS, we don't need anything. So, but we have a running TCP IP stack. And if you are in our RTOS environment, you can run this, you know, this little snippet in a separate task, for example. So, uh, and it will be your networking task. So, um, So, um, and uh, so the next step would be for me is to um, uh, uh, let's add some networking functionality. So now what I want to do, I want to create an MQTT uh, client that connects to the, uh, uh, to the MQTT server. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I want to show you the, the messages, the message exchange that happens with the MQTT server. But before doing that, I want to create a simple web server for uh, on that on that device. Since we already have a running TCP IP stack, I want to show you how easy it is to run a web server. So uh, all it takes is just a couple of lines. So first line is says just start HTTP listener on port eighty and use HTTP event handler function as the event handler function and the handler function that defines web server functionality is this. So HTTP event handler. And as you can see, that handler function receives um, three parameters, connection, event number, and event data pointer. So it could be like multiple event, event numbers, but we specifically catching uh, HTTP request event. And we are replying with the message, hello from STM32, current tick number is whatever, current tick number, hell get tick. All right, so let me try to, to sorry, let me try to build that, that functionality and, uh, um, and flash it. So, So flashing this, and after this, we should have a running web server on our device. Okay, so, and let me try to use curl utility. So I'm running curl and I see the response, hello from STM32, right? And also I can go to the web browser and have the same. So here, let me refresh this page. And as you can see, it refreshes, shows the current tick number. So uh, awesome. We have a running uh, web server. 
Nice. So, but what we what we want to do, we want to run an MQTT client. And to run MQTT client, we need a, a little bit more. So let me go and consult my cheat sheet again. <laughs> so, and add MQTT functionality. So all MQTT function functionality, the most basic functionality is here. So as you can see, it's like less than one page of code. And I will describe any, uh, uh, like everything. So the first thing we need to do for the MQD functionality is to declare uh, two variables. One variable is the URL of the MQD server. And the MQD server that we are going to use will be HiveMQ. So HiveMQ is the public uh, MQD server. There are many public servers, but this one is pretty handy. Uh, I think it's uh, it's hosted somewhere in Germany by some German company. So, uh, and one good thing about that MQTT server is that it has a pretty handy uh, web client. So you can use your browser to connect to this server and to send uh, and receive messages. And that what we will use later on uh, to test our functionality. Uh, but so let's continue with the code. So we'll, we'll one thing is the MQTT server URL. Another thing is the MQTT connection. So the next thing is that we need to create MQTT server, uh, MQTT handler. So, and I will describe it like a, a later, uh, basically right now. So what this MQTT handler does. So when we uh, connect to MQTT server, so this piece of functionality says, when we connect, then we subscribe to the topic ABC slash Rx. Now, remember when I was talking about implementing uh, request response semantic. So I said that the easiest way to do that is if a client uh, subscribes to the topic device ID slash Rx, and sends responses to device ID slash TX, okay? So here it is. When we connect to the MQTT server, we subscribe to the topic called ABC slash RX. So I just chose the device ID to be ABC. Okay, uh, when we receive a message uh, and we only receive a message, if somebody else publishes a message on this ABC RX topic, but when we receive a message, we create a response. You see, uh, we create a response buffer. And inside the response, we basically just print that we have received a message on this topic uh, and we have received that message. So we basically echo the received message back to a different topic, ABC slash TX. All right, so this way we do not, you know, we do not create any functionality we just create sort of like an echo an echo implementation. So we receive stuff on Rx and we echo that stuff to TX. So, and we call MQTT pub to publish that message. All right, and, 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 and the last thing, when we receive a message event close, we just set this static variable MQTT connection to null. Uh, and why that's, that's needed? It's needed for the rack connection log logic. So, um, because uh, like we are running MQTT client, it can disconnect at any time. And if we disconnect, we run a timer function that kicks in every, every second. And then if we see that MQTT connection is null, then we go and connect, create that connection to the MQTT server. So this way we constantly kind of trying to reconnect. And this last piece, we need to add it in main here, like after uh, HTTP listen. Uh, to add this timer functionality. So we are saying, run, uh, like call this function, timer function every uh, thousand milliseconds and keep repeating that, like uh, call them. So basically that's it. Uh, and this way we have a, a basic MQTT functionality. Let me flash this firmware now. So, um, and let me observe the logs. So now, so now we have HTTP server running on our device. As you can see, server continues to work. I can refresh this page. We have server 
And also we have MQTT client running on this device as well, which connects to the uh, server, uh, what it's, it's, uh, you see, it says subscribe to ABCRX. It can it connects to server um, uh, this uh, HiveMQ. All right. So now let me use this a uh, web client to demonstrate how it works. Right. So here we have logs from our device, and what I can do on on our client, I connected, and now let me subscribe to to topic ABC slash hash hash as far as as, as you remember is a in is a universal uh, wild card so that means that we want to receive absolutely all messages that start uh, with abc slash like with topics that starts with abc slash so we subscribe so now we subscribe to 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 all these messages right and now uh, we let's publish the message so abc slash rx Right, so this is the topic ABC slash RX. So if we publish a message here, uh, let's publish hello device, right? And if I click publish, now this device should receive it. So let me hit publish. And you see here in the logs, I see that device received that and also sent a, a response. And I can see the request here because we, we we subscribe to all the messages, to our own re uh, request, and also to the responses. We subscribe to ABC sla uh, slash hash. And you see here, we print topics. So topic ABC RX, this is the request, hello device. And this is the response, topic ABC slash TX. And that's the message that we printed, topic, uh, basically an echo message. So um, with this, what I have to say, this is the skeleton and this is the basic principle on how to implement device fleet management of absolutely any complexity. So this is the basic building block. Uh, you are subscribing to topics and you are responding to other topics. This this is pretty much it. Uh, and now you can combine, you can subscribe to many different topics, or you can subscribe to one, you can encapsulate, you can you can define your own uh, you know, how messages look like. The messages could be binary, messages could be text messages, you can invent your own protocol, you can do whatever you want. But the basic uh functionality you can deliver. Our request and you can send responses. That's the way you do it. And uh, all the uh, sophisticated fleet management uh, uh, implementations, they use this, right? You can put all sorts of bells and whistles on top and some are really required for the production functionality. For example, TLS, authentication, um, uh, you know, like the topic namespace in MQTT is not restricted. Any, you know, anybody can listen to any topic. Like in this, in this server, I can listen for wildcard topics and get get tons of messages from other people, right? And in production environment, you probably wouldn't wouldn't do that. And you would like to restrict, for example, you would like to restrict devices to a certain uh, subset of the namespace. But that is all uh just you know they're not related to the uh, uh to the fleet management itself <laughs> so um i could could finish <laughs> on this part right because this 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 is the way you do it so uh, uh but uh, i'd like to um uh, to show you how the uh you know like the like the, the real implementation the implementation that is close to real and this is implemented uh, by Mongoose Library. So one of our examples, it shows a device fleet management reference uh, reference application, which you can use uh, for in, in your own project, uh, um, free or commercial, uh, you can use that to implement a you know, real, real, real device management. 
And uh, so let me let me do just that. So I go to GitHub Mongoose and I go to my um uh, go to my terminal. Now I want to uh, split the terminal in two. So now I'm at home, right? And I want to clone this uh, this repository. So I'm cloning Mongoose repository. And uh, in uh, so I want to uh, uh, show you um, a pre-made uh, example device device management example. So uh, it's you can see it here if you go to developers reference projects. So device management system. If you go to live preview, so that's that's pretty much it. So that's what I want to show you. Uh, but I want to run it from sources. So I cloned the the repository. If, if I go to Mongoose uh, examples MQTT dashboard, so in MQTT dashboard example, there are two things. One thing is the dashboard, which is a web console that you just saw, a and the other thing is a device uh, device firmware, right? So what I'll do here. I'll copy the device firmware implementation into my cube project, and then I'll run a dashboard here on my workstation. Okay, so let me do that. Uh, I think it's better to copy using GitHub. So I go to examples, I go to MQTT dashboard, and go to device. And all I need to do is copy, I think I need to copy three files. Net.h is one file. So net.h and let me copy the content in include, I create file net.h. Uh, I need to copy net.c. So go to source, create new file net.c. And also I need to create a file hal.h. hal.h is the hardware abstraction layer, so which implements a, a GPIO, uh, GPIO inter, I think I made a mistake. So not hal.h, but hal.h. So new file hal, hal.h. And here it is. All right. So, uh, and I need to create also hal.c. Hal.c. And let me just copy paste the implementation for hal.c. So this hal.c is a, is a very simple abstraction for reading GPIO values and writing GPIO values. That is what device does in that in that example so it accesses gpios and as you can see for reading values we are reading so we are giving the pin number and we always reading the from the port b so G, from the gpio gpio b the given pin number and if we want to write to a given pin number for example to pin 7 which is a blue led then we are writing to GP, gpio b pin seven, right? So that's what it is. It's a very, very simple abstraction. And we also printing that fact that we are setting the pin to the corresponding value. All right, so uh, that's what it is. I think we also need to change main.c to include um, nets.h. And here, instead of creating our own MQTT, um, uh, MQTT, uh, the client, let's use the one from net.c. So I'll, I'll just comment this out, timer, our reconnection timer. So we do not connect, but we call web init and pass MGR. So basically what we are saying, uh, we just copied that file net.c and we have web.init function that initializes another MQTT client which is fairly versatile. You, you'll see it right now. Okay, so let me build this and flash it. So I flash this firmware right now and I should see logs from here. Okay, 
So we have logs. Cool. Uh, so, and as you can see from the logs, a, our device has connected and now uh, we connected to the topic MQTT, MG MQTT dashboard slash my device ID slash RX. Uh, and uh, we sent this message, which is a retained message, right? Uh, uh, by the way, let me change the ID of our device from my device ID to something else. So uh, let me change it here. So instead of my device ID, let's say device uh, webinar one, two, three, for example. Let's rebuild and reflash the, the, the firmware. So now we have a, a device and now let me start the dashboard. So I go to uh, that dashboard and I run Mongo's server, obviously, to, to run the dashboard. So it runs on port eight. Thousand. If I go to local localhost eight thousand, I see a device dashboard. So here it is, and so let me. So uh, and it runs and shows a bunch of devices, and one of those is the device webinar. But why it says device webinar one? Because uh, I think there is a limit. Let's uh, let's say it's device one, two, three, four, for example, not device webinar one. Device one, two, three, four. Um, and this device dashboard, what it does, uh, it it basically also an MQTT client, right? So, uh, and in order to see all the messages that these devices communicate, as you see, this device one, two, three, four is our device here. It appeared here on, on the console. So I can select it and I can see stuff, right? And this is a simple web UI, which this reference application implements. It basically shows a bunch of controls. You can specify which pins you want to see. And also it has a firmware update section which actually works. Uh, so, but I won't be talking about firmware updates, pretty complicated. I'll just show this, right? And our uh, WebSocket client, let me uh, reconnect and subscribe to the topic MGMQTD dashboard slash hash. And when I connect, you see, I see all retained messages. Remember I told you that retained messages are used to, you know, keep device state. Here I see all of them, right? Uh, and, and these retained messages tell me what devices are present on my fleet. And also I, I can have a state of all devices. And that device dashboard just reflects it's just a simple UI representation of that data, right? This device dashboard also connects to this MQTT server, to this uh, MQTT topic, and also catches the same messages and it just renders those devices in a nice way. Now, uh, as you can see, every device which is online reports that sort of that stuff. Uh, the, the configuration, uh, specifically the pin map, which pins you want to see and the status of the pins. So let me go and see uh, on my on my board here, right? I have three pins. Uh, I have uh, uh, zero, I have seven and I have 14. So let me save it. So, and now I see that that four pins are off, you know, and I know that we can figure those pins. B0, B7, and B14. So now I can use this simple UI to switch them on. I think, let me let me show you how it works. So, eh, I don't know like if you can see that or not, but basically there are three, three LEDs, uh, blue, green, and red, and I can switch them on and off uh, and, and they switching on and off on my board. And every time I switch, every time, for example, pin seven, which is a blue LED, uh, I do that, my device receives that message from the MQTT server. So basically it's our web console creates a message uh, and sends it to the, to the, uh, to the RX topic um, uh, and, and, and says, hey, please change the state of your 
change your, your configuration, change your pin status from uh, 111 to 101. So basically turn off the, the blue pin and then, then the board says, okay, setting pins to the required state and then it reports the state, right? And the dashboard reflects that reported state. So basically that's where that, that's how it works. And this specific reference application implements a pretty simple LED control. So, uh, uh, and also it implements firmware update, which is not, not trivial. It's a pretty complex thing. And we have a separate webinar for that. Uh, but I think that concludes my, my talk today. That's everything I wanted to show you. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much time to describe in detail how specifically this application works, but I believe um, I I managed to show you how the principle works. You know how to uh, to build the uh, manageable MQTT manageable device from scratch, from absolute scratch, and how it really works. So um, that's it. Uh, what I want to do now, I want to finish this presentation. After the webinar, I will send a follow up email to all the participants. So all of you will receive an email with the slides with the uh, pointers, with the references, with everything. So you'll see the, and you'll have all blueprints. You'll be able to repeat everything yourself. Another thing I want to mention is that our company, so we, we build this Mongoose library. Uh, we also help other companies to implement networking functionality. So if you work on the uh, connected device and you are, uh, uh, you want our assistance with any of related topics uh, with with your firmware, uh, for example, web UI development, uh, firmware remote firmware update, or fleet management. So you can talk to us; we'll be happy to help. 